Good, Good morning, morning and welcome to the IT introduction within the study introduction days. My name is Lukas and I'm going to show you everything you need to know about IT infrastructure on the Technical University of Munich. My presentation will cover most parts you'll need for your everyday studies, starting with, the, with our campus management software to online. Then Moodle, our learning platform. Then we'll cover logins and services really quickly. Then we'll go on with the library. Oh. And finally, we'll come down to useful links and tools. In the end, because of recent events, we will add a few things about learning tools and features with Corona. Now, one more thing to mention. You can always ask questions and also Vote for good questions on our Slido, found under slido slash set minus it minus en. So, so let's, let's get started. started. We'll, we'll start, start with Tom Online, our main study course management, management and, and software, and software that is used for literally everything like regis registration for exams or lectures. Now, now I have we, we have prepared a video for you today. That will show you how In this Tom video, works. I'll explain the most important features of our campus management system Tom Online. It allows you to manage the most important aspects of your studies, such as lecture or exam registrations or your tuition. You can log in using your Tom login. After login, you'll see your home screen. Here you can find all features of Tom Online. In the top category, Studies and Courses, the most important tool you'll use is going to be your curriculum, which shows your current study progress and all modules you'll need to graduate. It is also the easiest way to register for lectures, tutorials and exams by simply looking up the relevant module here in the curriculum. It is also possible to register for courses the more obvious way. However, you are going to have to search for the name or better the module number of the course first. Within studies and courses, You'll also find the module catalogs of all departments, your study files containing all your personal data, as well as a practical calendar where all your courses and exams are entered automatically. Next, I'll show you the category exams, containing, as the name implies, everything regarding your exams. You will most easily find your exam dates in the curriculum as searching for them through the exam dates feature appears to be overly complicated. Here you can see the exam registration. Registering is done similarly to lectures, preferably via your curriculum or via the search function. Finally, you can see all exams that you are currently registered to, which gives you a nice overview. Going one step further, My Achievements contains all exams written in the past that have already been graded. Transcripts allows you to print grade reports, which are often asked for by potential employers, as well as showing your exam certificate for each semester. Finally, Recognitions shows the status of recognitions based on exams taken, for example, in prior study courses or abroad. Next up, Admissions contains important documents to print, such as a Certificate of Enrollment. And then the final important feature of this section is the management of your tuition. Tuition fees are usually due on the 15th of February or August respectively, so remember ahead of time. Account offers a few important things 
for the security of your TUM login. Here you can change your password or view the most recent logins. You can also manage your emails, but we'll come back to that later in the presentation. Finally, other IT services hosts a lot of useful services such as your Exchange Mailbox, Network Storage, Sync and Share, which is a platform to easily share documents with other students, as well as a list of free software offers by the TUM. As we reach the end of this video, it is good to know that you can select certain features of TUM Online as your favorites, therefore bumping them up to the top of the list. And that's it for TUM Online. And I'll continue with the presentation now. Alright, if you have any questions about this video and TUM Online in general, please ask at Slido. The link again it can be found on the top of every slide in this presentation. Next up, I'm going to cover Moodle, essentially our learning platform, where, to find, where you will find your exercise sheets, homework and lectures nowadays. Now, after you log in in Moodle, you'll see this front page. And mainly, you can see, all, you can see some things here, like all on the left, highlighted here on the slide, is all course categories. This is like manual registration to courses, but that is only used in exception because usually you will be registered to courses by default if you log, if you register to the course in TUM Online. Then next up, you can see Kursübersicht or lecture overview. This is your courses, like every single course you have in that semester. And these are usually visible after registration to a lecture into online. Might take some time, but usually they should be visible before the first lecture week. Then, upcoming events shows things that will happen in future, such as homework deadlines or quizzes or things like that. And then you have a calendar, which is essentially the same as upcoming events, just viewed as a calendar. Now, if you go onto a course page, you'll see something like here on the right. You'll have usually have some discussion boards, like most of the time it's notifications, which is announcement by the lecturer. And usually you're subscribed to this by mail already, and you will immediately get emails every time there is an important announcement. But that's really important because Sometimes there are announcements regarding homework and or even exams or changes in exams. Then you also have a discussion forum, which is usually for discussing topics of the lecture or the homework with other students and even lecturers. Now, on the main body of the page, the lectures are usually grouped by every week, starting for this semester from 2nd November to 8th November week and ending after the lectures are finished. Now, as an alternative, yeah, usually now you have lectures provided by Panopto if the professor decides to do it. Usually these are placed inside the main body, embedded mostly in for every week inside the week's part. Then, if that isn't the case and the professor is still using Panopto, you can see all completed recordings on the right side in the Panopto screen. Also, apart from lecture slides and lecture notes, exercise sheets and homework turn-ins can also be found here. Also on the right side you can see activities, which is basically containing lists of all homework assignments, discussion boards, etc. and different resources that have been provided. So that's about it for, Mu for Moodle and I'll continue with logins and services, which basically which logins you have, where to use them and what you can do with them. So the main difference is we have two different logins you can use 
First, your LRZ account, which is basically your TUM login, as I call it often. This is your main login that you already got from the Leibniz Rechenzentrum at the start of your time here at TUM, after you got accepted. On the other hand, we have the RBE account, which is only for the mathematics and informatics department, which is basically from the local Rechnerbetriebsgruppe, from those guys who do the IT, who are responsible for the IT services in this building. Now, the, L the LRZ account is usually comprised of two letters, consonant vowel, followed by two digits and then three letters again. And it is basically used for everything, like to online Moodle, Artemis, like learning platforms, administration, your email, your main TUM email, EduRoam login if you want Wi-Fi, and LRZ services like Sync and Share, GitLab, and VPN, which we'll come back to later. And also everything using the single sign-on of TUM, TUM Shibulet. So therefore, keep in mind, it is a really powerful account to have. So one, two, three, four, five, or password should not be a password. So think about something stronger, maybe. On the other hand, your LBE account, your login is usually your last name, plus minus a few letters that might be taken from the first name. And it's usually for everything that has an a URL with intum.de or martum.de and more detailed information can be found in the wiki. The slides will be uploaded later. Back to the LRZ account, again they also have a general overview and also what's important for some things, some things might, may, might require VPN access and there are also instructions available online. Then the LRZ also hosts a private GitLab, which is only visible for TUM students and people with a TUM login, and also a sync and share, which is basically like cloud. However, for the sync and share, the problem is that it might occasionally, under circumstances no one really knows why, lose some files. So preferably, if you can, use Nextcloud. So, we also have some software, which I might already have mentioned in the Tom Online video. It's mainly Microsoft products, things like MATLAB, which you might use regularly if you're a mathematics student. And you can also find software you have to register with a vendor with your Tom email. You get it for free, like the ChatBrains IDs, like IntelliJ for all computer science students, and other things. Then, Back, Back to, to the, the RGB account. account. The, the administration, administration is done using uCentral, uCentral Intum.de. That's, That's where you start by registering this year. year. Usually, you, you would go to the InfoPoint Informatics or Mathematics, mathematics and, and they would give you your registration. However, since the InfoPoint is currently not open for anything apart from emergencies, it is now done on online. Now, the informatics department also has a knowledge base, accessible only on TUM campuses and using the VPN again, which contains a lot of helpful information to anything. They also have a really good wiki describing almost everything you might need to know about your AGB account. And finally, they also have a cloud Next Cloud, which gives you 500 gigabytes of free storage and is also good to share things with other students. Now, the next important thing is your email. You get your default email in Tom Online. It can be seen in Tom if you go into Tom Online into email. You have a few settings. You usually have one default email that is your Tum, tum ID at mytum.de. That is usually the thing, the one email you already get once you're accepted at Tum. However, it's usually more useful to have a. I don't know why. It seems we have some echo problems. Okay. It's usually more useful to make a more 
human legible email like first name, last name at tom.de. You can create those in the same settings. In fact, you can create literally anything dot last name at tom.de. Also, you can set your mail forwarding options. You have basically three options. You can either only use the Tom Exchange mailbox or mail client with your Tom email, but you can also forward it to a other to any other email account, like for example a Gmail, or you can basically just forward it and discard anything in your Tom email account. What's important is that anything will happen over. Anything and everything will happen by email here. Most lecturers will send emails for things regarding the lecture or exams. Your exam registration will be via e will be via email. And finally, you'll also get important information on time and date changes for lectures or exam via email. So remember to check it regularly or simply forward to a personal mail account that you'll read every day anyway. Now, your Tom Exchange mailbox online is going to be found at mail.tom.de or you can simply use a mail client. And again, there is plenty of documentation online for that. On mail.tom.de or using Microsoft Outlook Exchange, you will also have a directory of all Tom students available. Now, the second email you might have if you're studying math or informatics, you will have a, another mail by the ABG. Namely, usually, your ABG login at intum.de or martum.de respectively, depending on your study course. It can be accessed at webmail intum.de and you can also get an email certificate for that. But usually, since you already have the other mail, most people and I do forward it to another mailbox, namely the Tom email, for example. And it's generally more useful to have a single mailbox for everything regarding your studies. Now, next thing we have is computer rooms and DME buildings. On the ground floor, between fingers 5 and 7, we have this small and big computer room, the Kleine und Große Rechnerhalle. This is like the biggest room with 125 places, with 125 workstations, and the small room also houses the RBG help desk. Or RGB help desk, yeah. Now, there are also more computer rooms found throughout the building. In fact, if you look on the door of any computer room, you'll find a list of other computer rooms available. But usually most of the smaller computer rooms are blocked throughout the day for lectures or tutorials. On these workstations you have Windows or Linux and you can log in using your AGB login. However, you can also remote access everything, your data on these computers by going to AGB Kennung at by going to your RGB ID at lxhalle.im.com.de or ssh.mar.tom.de and you can manage your files using appropriate software like WinSCP. Finally, you can also create an internal home page on these computers. Again, there's plenty of documentation for that. Now, if you have any questions regarding anything regarding your two logins, you might again use Slido. The link is on the top of the screen. Next up, we have printing and scanning in the ME building. Usually, everyone gets 50 pages per semester of free printing quota. If that is not enough for you, you can buy more in the Skriptenverkauf here in the Student Council for at most 3 euros 50 per 100 pages. Now, since this semester, there is follow me printing on all printers, so you can queue jobs and do anything else in the meantime. And when you want to finally print it, you go to the printer, put your student card on it, and then it will print the relevant documents. 
You can also have scanning. You can also scan documents on the printers on the upper floors, not in the Rechnale. And the scans can be saved to USB stick immediately or sent to any email you want. Again, this is documented on the wiki. You can also manage your printing and printing quota via uCentral. You need to enable printing on the status page of uCentral first. Again, there is plenty of documentation for all operating systems there. And when you get your first print job ever under this new system, you need to register your student card on the printer, which is basically you go to the printer, put your student card on, there will be an error message and then a dialogue which prompts you to enter your AGB login. Another simpler way to print is QPilot, which is a which is printing and managing your jobs. Check, you can also check your printing quota there. Again, you may need to register your student card on the printer. However, you do not need to register your account and enable printing there. Again, I've talked a lot about printing in the mathematics and informatics department. I did leave out physics for the last few minutes. But that's because it's rather simple. You have printers and scanners at the right of the entrance where you can log in using your LFZ login because, of course, you don't have an RGB login. But physics students get a free quota of about 60 pages per month, so quite a lot more than mathematics or informatics. Okay, finally, next question is how do you get online on campus? We have EduRome, which is basically a worldwide university internet network. You can log in using your LFZ login at EduRome MVND, which essentially identifies that you're from this TUM, or generally from the TUM or LMU or anyone else who uses the same single sign on, and use your TUM online or LFZ password. password. Now, the most important thing about EduRome, I myself right here could set up a Wi-Fi hotspot that uses the SSID EduRome and asks for credentials, username and password. So you might need to use certificates so your device knows that it is actually the real EduRome. And again, there are instructions provided for that. One more thing if you're on mobile, the Tom Campus app, which can be found on the Play Store or App Store, you can do this automatically for you. You can immediately set up EduRome and also there are more apps that allow you to properly set up EduRome on your phone. Now there is another one. The next network you can use is LFZ. Okay. The next, look, ne the next network you can use is LRZ, which is only usable with a VPN connection to the LRZ. Again. Then finally we have Bayern VLAN, which is available everywhere, at least everywhere we have EduRome. But that's just like your every other public Wi-Fi, so it isn't really secure. All right, I can remind you again, if you have questions, you can always go to Slido, ask questions, upload good questions, so we have a better idea of what many people want to know. And generally, I'll leave you some time now. Mm, yeah. Before we get started on the library.
Alright, let's get started with the library or how you get books or journal entries or anything else. Your student card also doubles as a library card, however you have first you have to accept the terms of use for the library in Tung Online. The library also has an online press, so after you accept the terms of use you can simply go into the library and get a book and check it out for a loan. However, you can also the, the library also has an online presence at ub.tung.de. And there is also an OPAC, which is essentially a catalogue of books, where you can search for books or literature. However, if you want to take out a loan from the OPAC, you have to select the proper pickup location, otherwise you can find yourself having to go to a different campus, for example, into the city centre. Next up, they also have OPAC Plus. You have to select OPAC Plus in the OPAC at the top of the page which will also search for scientific articles and journals, etc. At that point, e-access login is recommended, so you can actually get direct access to this, these features. They also offer interlibrary loan, which is essentially get checking out a book from a different library. They will send it to TUM, and then you can take it from any of the libraries where you specified. And finally, Documentum, which is a service where you can get scans of journals or books that are available. These scans will be sent to you by mail within a few business days. And also there's a limitation because of copyright, you can only scan 10% of any book at once. Now, speaking about e-access, as I already mentioned it, if you want to take out ebooks, you can authenticate at login exsubitum.de and then simply go into the OPAC and go to a book and you should be able to see a button that reads read online. Then you have direct access to the ebook. Next, if you're logged into eAccess, you'll also have access to the EZB, which is an online access to scientific journals and the DBES, which is a list of external databases which contains everything from essays, dissertations, statistics, facts, generally everything. Now, for e-media, login may be required on the pages themselves. If you go going to external e-media, you can log in using Tom Schibolet or single sign-on, usually if you look under institutional subscription. Finally, there is Springer Link, which is like the most used library feature from most lecturers. They give you, usually they give you a direct link, you can log in using institutional access, using your TUM login. And that is basically access to every single piece of media from the publisher Springer. Next up, useful links and tools you might need or not need, I don't know. But they really do make your life easier. So first of all, I'm going to go with a shameless plug and say we have even more stuff at the set. Of course, you can always look up our website. You can, if you want to see the campus, you can also see our digital campus tour, which we have uploaded previously on this channel. And then you can also get a copy of the digital setup or freshman's guide. Now, for other things that happen during the set, later today we're gonna have the game rally at 2 pm on our Discord. And finally, there's gonna be something on Monday, namely the. Well, namely, student initiatives will be described on Monday, I think, also around 2 pm. You might look on the website for that. Now, back to useful links and tools. We have tum.sexy, which is essentially a list of short links. It's essentially a whole page of short links. It was mainly planned for the Bachelor of Science of Informatics and contains curricula, food, lectures, so essentially lecture notes and information to every single require lecture and most electives for that study course and other study materials. But it also contains important things such as food, where to get food, 
what, what the, the menu, menu in the canteen, canteen or in the BIST 20 ME building, etc. Et you can simply check it out, you might find one or two things that are really good to use. Next up we have Share Latex, which is an online Latex editor. So you can simply go for tech documents and you can also collaborate with other students simultaneously, I think simultaneously even. We also have a room finder, which is very important if you have to find wherever that one room is where you have your tutorial or lecture. Essentially, it is also relatively useful if you're going into buildings you don't really know. Now, next up, if you want to stay on top of the news, we also have two newsletters from our student council and from the general student council, the ASTA. They also have two more newsletters, which can provide some useful information for like studies or generally inquiries like on a notice board. And now that would be it normally. We would be done now. However, there is one more thing which is called Corona. Therefore, we had to make some changes to our usual teaching routines. So this year, we have a hybrid semester at first, so courses are both online and on campus. So you might see some courses only online, in fact, most courses, but some courses are actually held on site. The use of tools and software for online teaching is completely at the discretion of your lecturer, so it might change from lecture to lecture and will be explained in the first lecture. Now, important, you need to register for your course into online and check for announcements on Moodle, because if you don't, you don't know how the course is going to work out, especially now that every lecturer might use different tools. In fact, for lectures and exercises on site you actually have to be you're required to be registered on Tom online for this semester due to contact tracing regulations also some courses may use any other communications options that i will not cover now so always check with Tom online or moodle for lectures you have the following things like, of course, first the obvious choice on campus, but that is very rare. I, I personally haven't seen any lecture on campus at the moment. But it's mostly smaller lectures with like probably like 50, 60 participants. It is allowed up to 200, but I doubt that anything close to 200 will be on campus. Now, Tom Live is our live streaming and recording service for lectures and tutorials that has been in use for quite some time now it can be accessed using live rgb.tum.de and usually links will be provided in the Moodle course. Nowadays we also use Panopto which also allows to embed recordings into the Moodle course. So as I explained earlier you can see those lecture videos immediately in the Moodle course at the appropriate location. Streams.tum is essentially also another live streaming service that will be linked in the Moodle course and will also support recordings of lectures and yeah. recordings of lectures and exercises. Zoom is one of the more controversial ones. It is usually only used for live lectures or to mainly tutorials actually. Usually there will be a Zoom link in the Moodle course or shared via email and I will explain more things about Zoom in the next, in the next slides. Then Big Blue Button is essentially the same thing as Zoom but, in Tum, but on a Tum hosted server which might also support recordings. Finally there is Lecturio which is mainly only used by the School of Management, which offers recorded lectures. However, to have access to this, you first need to register with your TUM email. For exercises, like I said, the only two tools that are really used widely are Big Blue Button, 
only, only used in the mathematics and informatics department since, since we have since, since the physics department does not use our server infrastructure it is kind of simple you just open the meeting link in the browser and that's it you can also create your own rooms if you you have a AGB login on the BB AGB Tom.de. The other option is Zoom, which is used Tom wide. Essentially, every department, I think every department uses Zoom. Again, it is rather simple. You can participate using the meeting link or using a meeting ID and password at tomconf.zoom.us. Or you could simply use the Zoom client if you wish. Using a browser, you simply go to Tomcom Zoom US, go on to meet, join a meeting, and then you have to select join in browser. Zoom likes to bully you into using the client, so you might have to be slightly persistent there. You can also start on meetings in your browser if you wish. Again, you have to be slightly persistent because Zoom really likes to push the client. Again, this time you need your LRZ login. Using the desktop client you, that is downloadable on the Zoom website or basically if you join a meeting and simply select to download Zoom, you, can, you have to log in with single sign-on and the single sign-on ID is TumCon. Then you can use your standard LRZ login. Again, you can join with ID and password. It's, it's rather simple. It says enter meeting ID, enter password. Or you can open your meeting link in the browser and then allow the browser to start your Zoom application. Starting a meeting is slightly easier in Zoom than in Big Blue Button because you can just click on new meeting and there you have a meeting. Now the final topic about our teaching is about our online teaching is going to be exams because at some point you're going to have to write exams and at, at this point in time it is still unclear whether there will be online exams but it is very very likely. Now usually you'd either have a closed book or open book. Closed book is rather special online because you are not allowed to use books and le lecture notes, so you have to be proctored or invigilated using pro mostly using Proctorio or Big Blue Button. In that case, you will be invited into a Big Blue Button room. Usually, it's communicated well in advance. Most of the time, it's already said how the exam is going to take place when you register for the exam. However, usually, you'll get your information at least two weeks in advance as regulated by our, as it, as it is actually mandated. Now open book exams are rather easy. It's as it basically anything goes that is short of plagiarism or teamwork, but some lecturers might restrict your choices of things you might use. So some lecturers might say you must not use internet sources. But for open book online exams, it's usually problematic because if you spend a lot of time researching your answer using a lecture notes or, or the good old Google Joker, you might run out of time quicker than you think. So always keep that in mind. And finally, in usually one or two weeks in advance, there will be another mock exam where you basically go you usually have like a few questions it's sometimes subject specific sometimes it's just bullshit questions that is basically there for testing everything and making sure you're acquainted with the tools that are used and making sure you know how everything works and basically like that you might encounter the following tools namely tom exam which is an online exam platform mainly usually used for reviewing exam. Nowadays you can also hold exams using Tom Online. You can access the exam using a personalized link shared in the exam registration on Tom Online. Then after the exam commences you can download your problem sheet and after that upload it again. Usually it's 
either one of two ways. You can either edit it directly in the PDF or for example for math exams it's preferable to print it out, write on the paper, scan it and then upload it on to Mixon. Don't worry if it, this is gonna sound like it's taking some time. You usually get 15 or 20 minutes for uploading your answers after after the exam ends. Now next up we have Artemis which is kind of a niche creation which has become more and more widespread over the last semesters. It allows free text answers, modeling and even programming tasks that you can download or clone from a repository and that can be done in your own IDE if you want. However, Artemis also supplies its own IDE if you wish to use that. Finally, there are Moodle e-tests, which mostly are multiple choice tests that might be monitored again, mostly using Proctorio. However, there are some, TUM, there are some Moodle tests that m looks more similar to, like I described, TUM exam, where you get a problem sheet like like any other homework and you have to submit it within a certain time frame which is usually the same as the exam plus some upload time and yeah that's basically i think for mathematics that's more the more common option so now that's all about I mean, that's basically everything about our IT infrastructure and we'll now continue with questions on Slido. Right. Where will we, the slides be posted? The slides will be posted on a website. Again, it should be, I think the English slides should be online just right after this presentation. Right, I hope that answers your question. In TUM Online, under other IT services, I don't have TUM Exchange. How can I add it there? Okay, let me just quickly check that. Should be there. Give me a moment, please. Okay, it seems like that's a more common problem. I think it might be after you check your email settings or register in courses or something. Might just check it on your own. If the problem still persists, you might still ask either us or you might just ask further. So I can't really say that at the moment because it technically should be there, but it might be there after you start your studies. All right, next. Can we use semester plan tool or is it useless? I have unrelated courses listed here. It's in the curriculum section. Usually the semester plan tool it should contain everything where you should do things, but it also I think it also displays every single course that you can take and that is recommended for that semester. So basically, yeah. I mean, personally, I prefer to not use it, but yeah. Generally, when it comes to semester planning, you might also look on your department's website. They usually have plans for every for your study course that explain what you should and what you have to take. What is Artemis? So basically, Artemis is going to be the platform. Is going to be another learning platform besides Moodle that is mainly used for major informatics courses like fundamentals of programming in contrast to moodle it also allow it allows some better options for homework turn-in like you have 
git repositories that you can clone and then edit and then push for you and then push your solution after you're done which allows easier handling of like programming tasks in homework for ex which is kind of useful for like software engineering or fundamentals of programming if you're not studying informatics it might even happen that you will never see Artemis then Does okay. What is my main login and password? Hey, your main login for Tum. I would consider your Tum login your main login because you use it for like everything regarding your studies. I mean, it's usually a, your Tum ID, which is something like GA27XAP, or and the password is the password you chose for Tum Online. I mean, this is something I would regard the main login since it also is the official login for your TUM single sign-on. Does TUM ID provide access to LinkedIn learning? No, it does not, apparently. I am not enrolled yet. How can I get access to Moodle material? I guess you have to ask your lecturer then, because Moodle is only a, I think Moodle is only possible if you are enrolled and have your TUM ID. So just ask your lecturer, they will accommodate, especially since it might be a little bit slow with enrollment this semester. How do I access my TUM email account? All my email is forwarded to my private account, e.g. Gmail. You simply go to mail.tum.de and log in with your main login. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, of course. As I mentioned previously, you have to you have to go to your email settings and allow that in Tom online. Can we keep using Eduroam using a different university login or will this cause problems in accessing Tom files? Eduroam is basically like any other Wi-Fi with added security benefits. So you can, and it should not be a problem until your other university decides to stop your access. Then you might use your TUM login. Could you explain again, how we, are we supposed to use our VPN? For example, in order to use our MATLAB platform or other platforms. I think the VPN's main use is for like remote accessing anything within the university for from outside the university for everything else you do not need your vpn really yeah and of course for for the lz wi-fi yeah that's it i think we're done with all questions if you still have any questions you may post them now otherwise i'd say that's basically everything Oh, another question there. Can Nextcloud be used as a substitute like for OneDrive? Yes, it can be used like any other cloud. Do we get a central GPU VPN for tasks that need a GPU? I don't I don't know. I think Yeah, it's physics. Yes, the physics department apparently gets that. I don't know about mathematics informatics though. Yeah, you can, you can ask the LRZ. Okay. That's it. Any more questions? So that's it. We are now finished with our introduction to our IT. 
with our IT introduction. The recording of this whole video will be available on YouTube for later watching. And the next thing that's going to be up here within the study introduction days will be the game rally later at 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. on the Discord. That's it. Thank you all for watching.